Each of the missionary servants uh, of the Most Holy Trinity try to use their giftedness to reach out to the people of God, to live the charism of Trinity Missions, which is the preservation of the faith among the spiritually neglected and abandoned, especially the poor, and to call every Catholic to be an apostle, to be missionaries in their daily life. So there are many ways of doing that. Each of us do it in our own way. It might be in a parish. It might be in a, in a non-parochial ministry. It might be working with the homeless or with immigrants. This is the heart and soul of, of my life and our life. We bring in lots and lots of people. They come rushing from their neighborhoods, very difficult and challenging neighborhoods in Compton and here in South Los Angeles, in a sense to, to run away from life. And I started um, to be very critical about that, wondering why is there so much celebration of sacrament? Why is there so much worship? But I would look around and I saw very little transformation. And the power of Jesus is the power of us caring for one another. But if we don't know one another, how are we going to care for one another? You can hear always the police helicopters, police around you. To be honest, sometimes made me nervous. But it's a stage of my life and formation. Probably the continuous temptation is to try to do things. But this is not the time to do things. This is the time to be present with the people. And so the heart of my vision has been um, to invite people to come together. So to come to the heart, to the emotion, to talk about it. how am I feeling in my body, living here in South LA, listening to gunshots, um, watching uh, kids be shot on the street. You know, the mission of Jesus is to build bridges between broken hearts, um, to allow um, the pain of the brokenness become the healing of presence to one another, um, especially those that aren't like ourselves. When I was a police officer here in the early 2000s, some of the most violent years we've had. And I was invited to go over there and meet Father Stan. And there were all these kids in a circle. I actually sat in the circle. And in that circle were kids that I had arrested. And, and I still remember to this day how powerful that was. It's about the collaboration. All of those things coming together are truly what reduces crime. And the department started looking at our ways to work with intervention uh, and even with a clergy leader such as yourself because we, we knew we couldn't arrest our way out of the problem. Uh, me able to walk in with Father Stan to a room and talk about the trauma that's being caused in these communities is going to have more impact than if I walk in in uniform and try to talk to children and parents. Kind of build that bridge to be able to talk some of these kids out of that life. That these are gang intervention workers and case managers that are out on different neighborhoods and different streets all day and all night long where they're out on intervening for violent situations. Most of them are ex-felons who have been to prison um, that have been sick and tired of being sick and tired. They want to be a part of the healing. About 11 years ago, we was at a candlelight vigil for a loved one who was murdered. And while we was there, you know, paying our last respects to him, someone came up in the crowd and killed my, my twin brother and my little cousin. And with that, it, if, if I didn't have the information I have now, I could have been that same person where I wanted to retaliate and kill someone else. But I take that energy and like, no, I don't want nobody else to go through this. And so that's why I stayed to this fight. Like, I want to help someone else not go through the experience that I've been through. I have to heal myself before I can heal someone else. And so, I, so the relationship that we do have, the communication that we have, I think it should be shared around the world. I've been in and out of jail and I've been dealing, up to this point, I was dealing, you know, in, in the underworld, you know, doing all kind of stuff that was wrong. And usually, you know, somebody that lives in the, in the street life or is out there in the world, and they're not used to people having their arms open for them, you know? And right here, it's a place that their, their arms are open. You know, it does, they don't judge you, they don't look at you. It's kind of easier for me, probably for me to relay. That's probably like why they handed it over to me. And we kind of support each other in that way. So, or just, you know, me go and sit down with them so that person sees that somebody just like him is, 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 is changed and, and is looking for a better way of life. And, and maybe give them that hope that they could do it also. We share a, a charism in common um, to serve the poor and the abandoned. But the other piece is a part of our charism is, is to empower the people of God. But we're all called um, to that place of, of proclaiming the, the message and the mission of Jesus in the everydayness of our lives. That's our mission from my interpretation as missionary servants. In the everydayness of our lives, we are the apostles of Jesus.